On page 194, we have activity 25. It's called Tips for Dealing with Misbehavior. Now, that's different from descriptive praise, right? Because sometimes we know the child has, has done something well, done something correctly, and we want to give them praise. But sometimes they, sometimes the child misbehaves. The child doesn't behave well. And if a child misbehaves, then you need to tell the child what to do to change that behavior. So if you behave, that's the verb, to behave, you can say to behave well or to behave badly. We can use the negative miss in front of behavior, the noun, and we get misbehavior. So we have two nouns. The positive noun is behavior, or that's normal. It's the normal noun, not positive or negative. If we put miss in front of it, misbehavior, then we mean bad behavior. All right, so when children behave well, we can give them descriptive praise. But when they behave badly, when they misbehave, you know, like they might hit their brother or sister, or they might, you know, throw their food on the floor, something like that. So after children misbehave, do you want to give them descriptive praise? No. No, that's not a good idea. Do you want to make them feel sorry for what they did and then learn how to change their behavior? Yes. Yes, that would be a good idea. So you should make them sorry, but you have to explain to them what they did, what part of their behavior is unacceptable. You don't accept it. You say, no, this is not right. And you need to tell them what to do to set things right, to make it correct. Now, some child development experts say it doesn't help to just punish the child for misbehavior. So sometimes you get frustrated. Here's the verb and the adjective. If it frustrates you, you feel frustrated. If you feel frustrated, sometimes you get angry and you might hit the child or yell at the child or somehow punish the child. But child development experts say, if you simply punish the child for misbehavior, they can't learn. They need to know what to do. They also need to know what part of their behavior is bad and what part they need to change. So punishment, if you simply punish the child, that may make the child want to fight back instead of changing their behavior. So we have some tips in this activity to explain how you can handle a child's misbehavior. And if you follow even one or two of these steps, the behavior can change. So let's take a look at these tips and we'll look at the situations. All right, now we have a situation where there's a child playing with a soccer ball inside the house. And his mother tells him to take the ball outside. But he continues to play with the ball inside. Have you seen this kind of behavior before? Yeah. You told him to go outside with the ball, but he still plays with it inside. And what happens when you head the soccer ball? You hit it, hit it with your head. If you head the soccer ball, where, where will it go? If you head the soccer ball. Do you know what it means to head the ball? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Where, where do, what happens when you head the ball? Well, you, you do it. Yeah, you, you use your head. You, if you kick the ball, you use your foot. If you head the ball, you use this part of your head, the forehead. Yeah. Okay, so what will happen when you do that inside the house? Probably something will get broken. Has that ever happened in your house? Yes. Playing ball and the ball goes... <sighs> All right, so let's say the child doesn't listen to his mom. He heads the ball and it breaks a glass, a drinking glass. 
Okay, so that means he has not listened to his mom. He misbehaved, and there was a broken thing afterwards, right? He breaks the glass. And let's first of all think, what should we do first? We have to stop and think about it and try not to just be angry. We need to explain the rules. So tip A says, explain the rules. What are the rules? Are there any rules in your house? Do you say no balls inside the house? All right, if we have these three choices, which of these three choices explains the rules the best? Number one, why do you have to play with the ball outside? I, that's because I said so. That's why I told you to take the ball outside. You have to listen to what I say. Balls are for outside play. If you want to play with a ball, go outside. Which of these things explains the rule? Number three explains the rule. Balls are for outside play. Yeah, sure, balls are great, but not inside. If you want to play with a ball, that's the condition, right? Then what do you do? Go outside. Okay, so if you want to play with the ball, go outside. That's the rule. So this is an example of how you can explain the rule without getting mad. Okay, the other ones feel like you're kind of, you know, angry at the kid. Now, let's look at tip B. Here's tip B. Explain to a child how he can be helpful. Helpful. Right? You want to teach the child how he can be helpful. All right. Let's say there are three different tips, and we want to figure out which of these three is the best one. Can you please take the ball outside? It will be safer if you play with it outside. That's the first one. The second one. You keep throwing that ball in here. You'll break something. And the third one. You're making me angry. Take the ball outside, please. So which of those do you think explains how the child can be helpful? The number four, which is the first of the three that I read. Okay. Can you please take the ball outside? That's a request. And then it'll be safer if you play with it outside. So you give a reason. You don't want dangerous things. You want safe things. So if the child understands about safe and dangerous, then they'll understand more clearly. It'll be safer outside. In tip C, it says give a choice for acceptable behavior. Give a choice. Choice means there are two different options. So we have three ideas here. The first one is play with the ball outside or put it away and play with these indoor toys. The second option is Go outside and play with that ball, or you'll go to bed without dinner. And the third option is, take the ball outside, or sit down and hold it in your lap. Which one do you think is the most reasonable one to give? Seven, which is the first of those three. Play with the ball outside, or put it away. And play with these indoor toys. So there are some toys that you can play, and they're suitable. They're appropriate for indoors. The second one is like a threat. Okay, if you do that, you know, that's the or. That means I'm going to threaten you to do something without, you know, going to bed without dinner. And the third one, take the ball outside, number nine, or sit down and hold it in your lap. Do you think the boy can do that? I think you have had some experience. That is too difficult to do. So that choice is not very reasonable. That's not a reasonable choice. So you want to make sure if you're giving a choice, it should be reasonable, something that the kid can do. Tip D. Tip D says, tell what will happen if the child continues to misbehave if the child doesn't listen to you and continues to misbehave. Here are three options. Number 10 says, stop playing with the ball inside or I'm going to spank you. You know spank? Yeah. 
Spec hit. Okay? It means to hit. The second option, number 11. Take that ball outside now, or you're never going to play ball, play with a ball again. And the third one, stop playing with the ball inside, or I will take the ball away for three days. So there are these three tips. Which one will tell what will happen if the child continues to misbehave? The number 12, which is the third option. Stop playing with the ball inside, or I will take the ball away for three days. For a child, that might seem like a long time, but it's long enough. You don't have to take it away for a week or a month because that's way too long in a child's life. But three days is pretty long, and they can feel how they can't play ball for three days. So that's an option that is... Is, um, is worth giving, right? But the other one, you're not going to play with a ball again. That's an empty threat. That kind of threat is something you probably can't deliver on because certainly they'll be able to find a ball and, and play with it some other day. And then the first one, we don't advise spanking or hitting or punishing the child physically. In tip E, Look at tip E. Focus on the behavior as bad, not the child. So this is an important thing to make sure the child knows the child's not bad, but the behavior of the child is bad. So listen to these three, 13, 14, 15. You never listen to me. You just can't follow directions. Another one. It's good to play ball, but you must do it outside, not inside the house. And number 15, the third option. Look what you did. You broke a glass. You're a bad boy. So which of these follows the tip to focus on the behavior as bad, not the child? 14, right, the second one. It's good to play ball. That part is good. But you must do it outside, not inside the house. So now you're showing the limitation of the place to play the ball. And not number 15, it makes them feel bad. It's the bad, the boy is not bad, the behavior is bad. So try not to say you're a bad girl, you're a bad boy, because it's not the boy that's bad, it's the behavior that's bad. And you can make the boy good if they understand the behavior and misbehavior. In tip F, we hear, after an incident, show the child how to make things right. All right, so remember that the child did something wrong and there was some bad result. So now we want to tell them how to make it right. So here we have three, uh, two options, 16 and 17. You broke a glass. Get the broom and dustpan. Put on a pair of gloves and sweep up the big pieces. I'll vacuum the small pieces. And number 17, the se second option, now look at what you did. I have to speak, I have to sweep broken glass. Go to your room. Which of these follows the tip to, to help the children know what to do to make the situation right? Number 16, the first option. You broke a glass. Now let's figure out what's the solution. Get the broom and dustpan. Put on a pair of gloves because we don't want you to cut yourself on the glass. And you can pick up the big pieces. Sweep up the big pieces and I'll get the little ones in the vacuum cleaner. I'll vacuum the small pieces. Okay, the other one just shows anger, but it doesn't show how to make the situation right. How about tip G? Let the child experience the expected result of his misbehavior. Let the child 
experience the expected result. So we have three options here from 18, 19, and 20. If you play with the ball in the house one more time, I'm going to take the ball away. 19. Since you didn't follow the rules, you can't play with the ball for three days. And 20. You didn't listen to me, so you can't play with your friends this week. So which one of these lets the child experience the expected result? 19. Because in the previous one, we told the child in number 12, stop playing with the ball inside or I'll take the ball away for three days. If they heard this, then they know that this is coming. They can expect this type of punishment. You have already warned them in advance. You've already given them the rule. So if the child plays with the ball again indoors, you need to take the ball away. For how long? Three days. For three days. And that way the child knows that you're serious. If you don't follow through with that, then the, the child will think, oh, you don't do what you say. You say one thing, but you do a different thing. So I don't need to believe you. I don't need to be afraid of you. I will keep doing bad behavior because you won't punish me. But if you say this is what will happen and then you follow through and the child experiences the expected result, in this case, no ball for three days, then the child will know that you're serious about the consequences the consequences, the expected results. And this is sometimes difficult for parents to do. Do you ever find difficulty doing this? Telling your child, if you don't do da 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 da, I will da 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 da. So you need to make your consequences reasonable for the age of your child, and then you need to follow through on it. I told you last week, didn't I, about the little girl who was eating and then throwing the food? Did I tell you about that? Yeah. Right. So her mom took her down from the high chair and didn't feed her. And then the little girl knew, oh, if I misbehave, I don't get food. I better behave. So then she started trying the new food. Instead of throwing it away, she just put it in her mouth and said, oh, not bad. Really? It's okay? Okay. Any questions? Do you like these suggestions? Is this good advice? Yes. Good advice, huh? Okay, great.